วัสดีครับ Hello everyone welcome to Asian Connect I'm Tosatham Piem s a m b o o n When talking about race and ethnicity it goes beyond what passport or ID card you hold It's about biological features and other things such as biology It's about how you portray yourself how you look how you feel what skin color do you have These are all race and ethnicity ladies and gentlemen and we are always judging people by their race their ethnicity even though we are mixed nowadays we are saying hey what ethnic is that guy or girl and hey What race are those group of people? It's true, isn't it? So today we will take a look at one group called the Azam people, a small group in India that have lived in many ASEAN countries such as Myanmar and also Thailand as well. We will take a look at how they are living with Thai people and whether they are living in harmony with Thai people or not. But they are also considered Thai people as well because the Azam ethnic group have lived in Thailand for a long, long time. We will take a look at this group, how they portray themselves, their way of life, and how they are living in Thailand in harmony with other ethnic group. So So let's take a look. Our trip in search of stories of Thai ethnic groups in India starts from Kolkata, a major city of Western Bengal state, which is a gateway for the most convenient trip by air into northeastern states of India, called. States of Seven Sisters, with our destination on the north of the state of Assam. From the plane, we knew that we were close to our destination, with the scenes of sand dunes that emerged in dry season over one of the great waterways of the world. Brahmaputra River. In the northeastern state of India, bordering China, now Myanmar and Bangladesh, is the site of several ethnic group settlements, especially in Assam. Where the majority of population, unknown as Thai Ahom, Thai Ahoms are an ethnic Thai group who migrated from southern China with its Ahom Kingdom, established in this area in 1228, and ruled as a powerful independent kingdom for up to 600 years. Our home kingdom started to decline in the latter half of the 18th century AD, following an internal rebellion, and in early 19th century was invaded by Burmese army. It was defeated and became a colony of Burma. Burma became colonized by Britain in 1826, spelling a complete end to the Ahom Kingdom. Later, when India gained independence from Britain, Assam became a state in the Republic of India, and Thai Ahom people gradually assimilated as Assamese. Since the time of British colonial rule, the city of d i b u r g a of Assam state has been chosen as the administrative and trade center of the northeastern region of India. Even during the Second World War, this was a main military town and the site of camps for war refugees from Burma. Dibruga is situated within the basin of Brahmaputra River, 
called by the Thai Ahoms as Nam Dao Phi, an important river of the ancient continent traveling over 2,900 kilometers. This river flows to merge with the Ganges and drains into the Bay of Bengal, creating a vast delta, which is one of the world's most fertile areas. Concerns have been widely expressed over the river's ecosystem after China decided to build the largest dam ever on Tibet Plateau, the origin of this waterway that nurtures people in remote northeastern states of India with possible impacts on downstream Bangladesh. An example of richness as a gift to Assam by Brahmaputra River has been the large planting area of the best quality of tea in India, with Dibruga dubbed as the tea city of India. Although people in Dibruga are of Thai Ahom descent, most of them have been totally assimilated by Indian culture, with Hindu practices generally seen in the state of Assam. These groups of people are preparing to hold rites in accordance with Hindu beliefs on the banks of Brahmaputra River. This young woman said that she and her niece were performing the rite of floating a deceased ashes for her elder brother, who just died 10 days ago. According to the belief in Hinduism, the floating of a deceased ashes is a post-death rite to help send the deceased soul to a good place. In the northeast of India, not only the Thai Ahom can be found, but several other groups of ethnic Thai people also live in the area for a long time. There are altogether six groups, namely Thai Ahom, Thai Page, Thai Ai in the state of Assam, Thai Kamti, Thai Turang, and Thai Kamyang in the state of Arunachal Pradesh, adjacent to the Chinese border. These groups are able to keep their ethnic Thai identities firmly without being assimilated culturally like the Thai Ahom. On both sides along the way from Dibruga, we pass through dry rice fields. During the rice growing season, there would be rice fields as far as the eyes could see. This is the Asian social life left with rice growing since ancient times. Nampage village is located in the city of Naharkatiya of the state of Assam, some 58 kilometers from Dibruga. The village was founded in 1850, 165 years ago. It is a small community with about 100 households. The lower reach of Buri Dihing River before it flows into Brahmaputra River is the main artery of the Thai Page, the community with legends, traditions and lifestyle that differ from general communities in Assam. The Thai Pages were originally at Ho Gong to the north of Burma before migrating by boats along the tributaries of Brahmaputra River accompanying Prince Sir Ka Fa, the first king of the Ahom dynasty, before separating to set up a community here after Britain seized Ahom kingdom. Yeah.
<laughs> Nam Pa Ge Buddhist Monastery is about 155 years old, set up in 1850 and renovated in 1976. This monastery is like the spiritual center of the ethnic Thai Pa Ge and is also the largest Buddhist monastery in the state of Assam. When Her Royal Highness Princess Mahachakri Sirin Thorn visited this village in 2009, she also came to this monastery. An inscription of that event stands in front of the monastery's temple hall. The presiding Buddha in the hall, which was given by Thailand, reflects how strong the ties of the Thai Pages to Thailand are. Looking at the monastery's record book, in which visitors wrote down their impressions, we found that quite a number of people from Thailand were keen to follow up stories of the Thai Page before us. The Thais have multiplied when His Majesty the King granted a Roy Gatin robe to be presented at this monastery in 2013 causing overwhelming joy and happiness among all Thai Pa gay people. <laughs> Venerable Gena Pao Pante, the abbot of Nam Pa Ge Buddhist Monastery, who had been ordained for 48 years, told us that there were two monks residing at this monastery and four novices, all of them ordained in Theravada Buddhism of Siam Wong Sek. The monastery is not only the spiritual center for Buddhist Thai Pagay people, but also a spiritual refuge for people of all faiths. <laughs> the abbot gave permission for the opening of the monastery library, the depository of ancient documents of the Thai Pagay people. Mm. Some documents age up to 200 years, written in ancient Thai script. Most stories recorded are teachings which reflect beliefs in Buddhist principles, citing the results of humans' meritorious and vicious deeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, it's very old. This is the oldest, oldest. The Thai Pake people in the old days copied these documents from the sacred book to be presented to the monastery in the belief that this is the way to maintain Buddhism in a sustainable way. You have to make uh, three to five like copies of Tripitaka. You have to write mm. with your own handwriting. Right? So with your own handwriting, you have to write down the Tripitaka, then you have to donate it to the temple. The procedure, how did they feel, how the people used to <coughs> preserve their own distance. Mm. The monastery has presently kept these ancient documents, almost 200 of them, neatly wrapped in cloth, uh, so arranged section by section with control numbers as they are the good source for research and reference on the origin and existence of the Thai Pagay people in the future. <laughs> to be my guy. <laughs> Novice Cho Sang volunteered to take us on foot into the village to closely observe the lifestyle of the Thai Pagay people. Thai Pagay is a community with simple lifestyle of traditional agricultural society. The highly raised house is the result of a shrewd wisdom in expanding functional areas for the household. Every house has a granary called Ye by the Thai Pagay people for paddy storage. This is another general identity that clearly defines ethnic Thai group from others. When we arrived at this house, Oksan, the owner was there greeting us with smiling face. Oksan, 
We have been to Thailand. Have you been to Thailand? Have you been to Thailand? She was wearing a shirt printed with the name Thailand on the chest. She said it was a gift from a Thai visitor who stayed at her house last year. Oh. <laughs> Guests you. are always invited inside the home. This is a Thai tradition wherever one lives. Yes. For sale. Oh. For sale purpose. For sale purpose. <laughs> Nick Ya, 40, is the head of the household and father of two daughters. He said his home constantly hosts visitors from Thailand. He is a professor. The Thai Parque house is almost entirely built of bamboo. The roofing is made of dried palm or other leaves. The house is therefore cool with no materials to absorb heat. It is surprising that several houses age 40 to 50 years, but their main bamboo structures remain intact without deterioration. No, no. Uh, dry, uh, dry. told us that this upper outdoor area was the place where his mother told stories to him when he was young almost every night. Mm -hmm. So, this is our uh, grandfather built this house now. But dirty kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the Thai no, Parque no. house is clearly divided into sections, and this is the kitchen where food is cooked. The stove built of earth using firewood as fuel can hardly be found in the globalized world society today. <laughs> Verbal language used presently by the Thai Parque people remains the original language in the Thai family, which can be communicated with central region Thais from Thailand without difficulties. This one going to going to start. Nick Ya explained the way of life of Thai Pagay people through using of tools in his daily life. It is interesting to note that these traditional tools have been kept and passed on for generations. All ladies put here flower and go to temple. Mm. Uh, Before we left, Oxon invited us to taste her homemade snack. It was rice fried and sprinkled with sugar, slightly sweetened, going well with a sip of Assam tea. Novice Cho Sang took us to visit another house in Nampake village. The homeowner was not reluctant to welcome a stranger with ease and warm hospitality as always. <laughs> Sam Sang is the head of the household, leading a simple life with his wife, and Amlu, his unmarried elder sister. <laughs> <laughs> Thai Parque people of the state of Assam have almost similar features, complexion, dressing style, and way of life to other ethnic Thai groups residing in Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, and Laos. Yeah. Thai Parque women are dressed according to their age groups, generally preferring full-length long skirt and cylindrical shirt. Men prefer skirt like sarong wearing garments made of homespun textile. Thai Parque diet is not different from that of other ethnic Thai groups, with rice as a main ingredient. This sweet is made of rice mixed with sugarcane juice wrapped in banana leaf and grilled over low heat. The hosts were definitely quite delighted that visitors liked the taste of this Thai Parque sweet. We took leave with thanks to the hosts to have shown us another side of Thai Parque life. They also invited us from Thailand to make another return visit whenever possible. Nampake is a tiny village 
and we could walk across from one corner to another in a few minutes. This is the last house situated at the far corner of the village. It is also the oldest house built in 1958, 57 years ago. <laughs> The homeowner assigned his 19-year-old daughter, named Kam Yeon, to welcome the visiting guests. <laughs> this looks similar to other houses, with a television set providing entertainment and relief boredom. <laughs> An ancient style heirloom is placed in one corner of the house. And today, Kam Yeon is pleased to demonstrate her weaving skill to us. Although she excuses herself as just a beginner, but has been instantly improving with the technique. Thai Park gay people prefer their hand-woven materials, mostly cotton wool, obtained from trees grown in their backyards, spun into threads and dyed in desired colors, before woven into textile on traditional tool used since the time of their ancestors. This has been handed down and instilled in every Thai Park gay women. We can say that women from young to old can weave. Professor Emeritus Dr. Tatip Natsupa, a national distinguished researcher in the field of economics and an expert in development process, used to mention the Thai communities in India to have the quality of an ideal society. One such community is the Thai Pake, with simple traditional lifestyle, making enough to live on, being generous and sharing, a society of coexistence and real happiness. However, like other ethnic groups, the Thai Pake is facing the invasion from outside changes. The Riverside Dam construction project on the Buridihing River is another example of development that is changing the original physical features of this village forever. We hope that these superficial changes will not lead to internal changes, that is, the beauty that has long existed in the souls and spirits of the Thai Pake people. As you can see, Thailand is a diverse country. We have many race, many ethnic groups, and also many culture and religion as well. So we must understand the different types of people in order to live together in harmony. And once Thailand step into the ASEAN community, there will be more and more race, more and more ethnicity, and more and more people coming in, going out of Thailand, and living abroad as well within this 10 countries of the ASEAN community. The ASEAN community means a free flow, not only of good services and investment, but of people as well, especially skilled laborers. So to create understanding of different types of people is so crucial and so important so that we can live together in harmony. Do not be racist, do not discriminate, yet accept them and learn to accept the diversity because the more you know, the more you grow, the more you learn and the more educated you are as well. So I hope today's ASEAN Connect has made you understand more and more about the different races in Thailand, especially this race we explored today. But that's all the time we have for today's Arzin Connect. See you next time. I'm Tosatam Piem Sambun. Swadikap.